First of all, we're grateful to be here, and we're grateful for this opportunity we have to present our traffic control project. Although we aren't civil engineering majors and haven't extensively studied traffic flow, we feel our experience as drivers, combined with the principles we applied when modeling our system, um, give a valid project. Um, and we are confident that we will be able to address any concerns that may arise um, in this project. We will give our problem that we are trying to solve. We will describe the system, how we modeled the system. Um, we will describe how we implemented the controller to optimize our system, the results we found, and any recommendation, recommendations we have for the future. Um, time spent idling at an intersection can be a significant source of carbon emissions into our atmosphere. It also has a negative effect on air quality, especially here in Utah Valley. Um, time spent idling at an intersection can be kind of frustrating to drivers, especially when the traffic doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. So as a team, it was our goal to model a lighted intersection and implement a controller capable of minimizing the amount of cars idling at an intersection at any given time. So the way we went about modeling um, this process uh, is we, we used a simplified version of, of an intersection. Uh, we assumed that there is no turns, uh, that is just straight through traffic, and then we broke it up into the four sides of an intersection and looked at each one individually, um, the flow in and the flow out of each side. Uh, we estimated some, um, some variables by which we would build our model for flow in. Um, we estimated that there would be about one car arriving every two to seven seconds. Obviously there would be some variation in that depending on where you are and the time of day. Um, but we we made a ramp that would that would model um, model this, and then included some random disturbances to kind of simulate what would actually happen. Uh, as far as flow out, when the light turns green, um, the cars will will start from a stop, and then the flow through the intersection will slowly increase until it reaches maximum value. Um, we estimated that that value would be about three cars every two seconds and that it would take about 15 seconds to reach this maximum flow. Um, so we based our models, our model around this, and you can see that in this graph here, um, where the black line is the flow of cars coming in, so we have a ramp with some disturbance coming up, um, and then once the light turns green, once the, it hits a certain point, then flow, cars will start to flow out here, as shown by the purple line. It gradually increases till it hits a maximum value, and that result is that there's cars building up in the intersection until the light turns green, and then it starts to decrease until it hits zero, and then it turns green and or red and starts to climb again. Um, so then our next um, task, uh, sorry, our next task was to design a controller that would turn the light on and off, uh, that would do it effectively and accurately. Um, we designed our controller to uh, be dependent on the number of cars at the intersection uh, so that once the cars hit the number of cars at the intersection hits a certain value a trigger value then the light will turn green and cars can flow out uh, we hooked the intersections together so that as one light turns green the other light will turn red so that there isn't any you know accidents and cars flowing into each other um, and then doing this allowed us to mess around with the number of w with that trigger value um, so that we could optimize the number <coughs> of cars at the intersection. So as Scott said, the way we optimized this controller was by manipulating the trigger value. So we would have a sensor for the number of cars at the north and south side of the intersection which we used to base our controller off of. And so we determined that with six cars, with an activation point of six cars at the no total at the north and south sides of the intersection, that would give us the minimum average number of cars at the intersection. So you can see there on our graph, the high points are the unoptimized parameters. We had about 20 cars before it would activate. And so when we change that to six cars, the average number of cars dropped to 4.45 cars at the intersection at any given time. Uh, so next steps with this, with this project uh, include multiple intersections. We hope that we could include the outflow from one intersection into the next, from one intersection to the next, uh, and would also include feed forward control, so that cars wouldn't have to stop and start again at every intersection. We would also include cars that were turning, left and right, and also yellow lights and time delay between the switch from red to green, 
which were both things that we uh, neglected for the simple model. Um, and so our recommendations to apply this, this project to traffic systems are to model hopefully an entire city. Obviously the simulation would get very large, but this would serve to um, control flow in such a way as, as to maximize the number of drivers that are able to move safely through the city uh, while minimizing carbon emissions and minimizing uh, the amount of time that people have to wait at intersections. And um, that's our project. Thank you.